If you're a fan of Game of Thrones, you might remember the terrifying threat of the White Walkers, a powerful icy force that lurked beyond the Wall in the North. In real life, we don't have to worry about zombies or dragons, but we do have something similar to this wall called the Polar Night Jet, which protects us from the chilling cold of the Polar Vortex. But what is this Polar Vortex, and could you survive the extreme cold that follows? The Polar Vortex is a large area of low pressure and cold air surrounding Earth's poles. It always exists near the poles, but it changes in strength and size depending on the season. The term vortex refers to the counterclockwise flow of air that helps keep the colder air near the poles. Sometimes the polar vortex expands and sends cold air southward with the jet stream, a fast-moving current of air that circles the globe. This can cause massive Arctic air outbreaks in the middle latitudes such as in the United States, Europe and Asia, bringing frigid temperatures, snow and ice. You might think the polar vortex is a new phenomenon, but it's not. It's been around for as long as the Earth has had an atmosphere. However, the term polar vortex has become more popular in recent years since it is associated with extreme cold events. But why does the polar vortex expand and contract? The answer lies in the difference between the temperatures at the poles and the equator. The greater the difference, the stronger the jet stream and the polar vortex. The smaller the difference, the weaker the jet stream and the polar vortex. Have you ever experienced a disrupted polar vortex? Many probably learned about the polar vortex for the first time in January 2014, when the temperature dropped to minus 58 degrees Fahrenheit in Ontario. Cold Arctic air flowed southward, creating an extreme cold wave in USA and Canada. Another polar vortex disruption happened in 2020, when the polar vortex moved away from the pole and broke into two pieces that spread over Siberia and North America. It caused extreme cold spells as far south as Texas and led to the death of more than 200 people. But what is considered an ice age? Ice ages are long periods when the Earth's climate becomes colder than usual and large parts of the land become covered by thick ice sheets. The Earth has experienced several ice ages, lasting millions of years and separated by warmer periods called interglacials. According to scientist Michio Kaku, human history began when the end of the last ice age and the melting of the ice opened vast areas of the Earth for human habitation. And in his latest interview states, a polar vortex is like a tornado of cold air in the North Pole, and we're seeing an instability in the whole Arctic region potentially very dangerous. The most recent ice age began about 2.6 million years ago and is still ongoing, although we are currently in an interglacial period that started about 11,000 years ago. The current interglacial period, the Holocene, is expected to last for the next tens of thousands of years. Climate changes are variations in the Earth's average temperature, precipitation and atmospheric composition over time caused by natural or human factors. Both ice ages and climate changes significantly impact the environment and the evolution of living organisms. There are different theories about what causes ice ages and climate changes. However, one of the most influential is the Milankovitch theory, named after the Siberian scientist who proposed it in the early 20th century. According to this theory, ice ages are triggered by changes in the Earth's orbit, tilt and spin, which affect how much sunlight reaches different parts of the planet. These changes are called Milankovitch cycles and occur over tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of years. The Milankovitch cycles include three factors, precession, obliquity and eccentricity. Precession is the direction of the Earth's axis of rotation, which wobbles like a spinning top over about 26,000 years. Obliquity is the angle of the Earth's axis of rotation, which changes from 22.1 to 24.5 degrees over about 41,000 years. Eccentricity is the shape of the Earth's orbit around the Sun, which varies from more circular to more elliptical over about 100,000 years. 
These cycles affect the distribution of solar radiation on Earth's surface, causing variations in seasons and temperature. The Milankovitch theory links ice ages to reduced summer isolation in the Northern Hemisphere, leading to a cycle of ice accumulation and cooling. Interglacials, marked by warmer periods, occur with increased summer sunlight. However, the theory does not account for every ice age feature as factors like greenhouse gases, volcanoes, tectonic plates, and ocean-atmosphere interactions also influence climate. However, what would happen if the Earth's climate cooled again and we drifted into an ice age? The Earth's orbit would become more elliptical, and the tilt of the axis would decrease, reducing the amount of summer sunlight in the northern hemisphere. Changes in Earth's orbit and axis tilt would reduce summer sunlight in the northern hemisphere, leading to increased snow and ice accumulation. This would cool the planet, making the air drier and the land more arid. The process would lower atmospheric carbon dioxide levels, altering topography and weather patterns, and causing the crust to sink. Sea levels would drop, revealing more land. The biosphere would transform as plants and animals adapted or faced extinction due to colder and drier conditions. Human adaptation would be necessary through lifestyle changes, cultural adjustments, or migration to more hospitable regions. In an area where the polar vortex could plunge our world into a gripping mini-ice age, governments and societies globally would have to undergo a dramatic transformation to adapt and survive in this frozen new reality. This shift would ignite a fascinating blend of innovation, resilience, and reimagined daily life. Infrastructure would morph into a futuristic tableau reminiscent of science fiction. Cities would be reborn under gigantic domes, monumental structures of advanced transparent materials designed to keep the icy chill at bay. These self-sustaining biospheres, powered by renewable energy sources like geothermal and solar power, would become the new cradles of civilization. Inside, vertical farms and hydroponic systems would flourish, ensuring a constant supply of fresh produce, defying the barren, snow-laden landscape outside. Transportation would undergo a radical metamorphosis. Traditional vehicles would become obsolete, replaced by all-terrain, ice-capable transports, resembling something from an interstellar expedition. These robust vehicles would glide over frozen surfaces with ease, powered by eco-friendly energy. Governments would invest heavily in subterranean transport networks, connecting these domed utopias through high-speed magnetic levitation trains, tunneling through the permafrost like giant earthworms. In day-to-day -day life, the very fabric of society would adapt. Clothing would evolve into high-tech attire, equipped with thermal regulation systems, ensuring comfort in sub-zero environments. Education and work would shift dramatically towards virtual realms, facilitated by cutting-edge technology, creating a digital renaissance. Community centers and enclosed public spaces would become the epicenters of social life, hosting a plethora of activities from ice sculpting workshops to holographic entertainment, maintaining a vibrant cultural pulse. The mini ice age, while a formidable challenge, would spark a global renaissance of adaptability and innovation. Governments and communities would unite, forging a new path of survival in this icy epoch. This unprecedented era in human history would not just be about survival. It would be a testament to our unyielding spirit, a thrilling journey of transformation and resilience. It would be a fantastical yet plausible glimpse into a future where humanity thrives against all odds in the heart of a frozen world. As I mentioned earlier, ice ages are long periods where the Earth's climate is much colder than it is today with large ice sheets covering vast lands. Do you think there is a connection between the Ice Age and modern cold spells? Modern cold spells are short-term climate fluctuations, lasting days, weeks, or even months, caused by factors like the polar vortex, jet stream, El Nino Southern Oscillation, Northern Atlantic Oscillation, and Pacific Decadal Oscillation. Unlike the orbital changes driving ice ages, these cold spells are smaller and faster. 
They occur alongside the long-term trend of global warming induced by human-increased greenhouse gases. Changes in the frequency, intensity and duration of modern cold spells contribute to the unpredictability and extremeness of climate change. Amidst these climatic shifts, the coldest temperature ever recorded on Earth was minus 128.6 degrees Fahrenheit at the Soviet Vostok station in Antarctica in 1983, colder than Mars's surface average of minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Despite such extreme conditions, humans have lived and worked in Antarctica since the early 20th century. If the Earth enters a polar vortex-induced ice age, I believe we will survive it. Some humans have survived being frozen for a short period through suspended animation. It's a state where the body's vital functions such as heartbeat, breathing, and brain activity are slowed down or stopped due to exposure to extreme temperatures, but can be resumed later. Human-induced global warming is occurring at a pace and intensity unparalleled by any natural cycle potentially staving off and postponing the advent of the next glacial period. Consequently, for the time being, we might be shielded from such an extreme climate shift.